just very quickly want to say hello to Andy. Says hi, Stephen and Anne. Could you say happy anniversary to my wife? It's our first anniversary today. We love your show. Hope you love each other more. Her name is Tony Rhodes. It would make her day. Happy, happy anniversary, anniversary to Andy and Tony. Yeah, yeah. lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, let's go through the papers then. Former Conservative advisor Claire Pearsall and broadcaster David Hamilton. Welcome both. Yeah. Um, let's talk politics, leadership battle in the Telegraph. Sunday Telegraph, Claire. Yeah, and this is the moment that uh, Rishi's campaign team knew that he'd lost. And it's quite early on, at the beginning of August, during a leadership hustings in Eastbourne, where the team noticed that he had said the word California for the third time in under 10 minutes. Yeah. And I think it goes back to his uh, youth when he worked out on the West Coast in tech and entrepreneur businesses and was using that as an example of what motivated him and what he saw and, and what he wanted for the country was that kind of energy and entrepreneurship. But of course, people have taken it badly yeah. and looked at it and said, you are out of touch with people, you're out of touch with the United Kingdom, and then it all brings up Nom Dom's status of his wife and his tax affairs. So, I mean, if they're pinpointing it as early as that, August the 5th, it kind of begs the question, what were the what? campaign team doing in the interim to yes. stop that decline from happening? And does he still believe that he can do it now? I think you always have to have the belief that you can do it, otherwise you wouldn't, A, be in politics, and B, you wouldn't put yourself forward uh, to become leader. So I do think that he thinks that. The polls will tell a different story, but you have to still go out there thinking that you are the best chance, because what's the point in doing it otherwise? Well, that, well, yeah, and you could ask that as well. If he's still thinking in his mind, California, maybe that's where I ought to be going. Why is he wasting our time? I wonder quite how long he'll hang around afterwards. If he's not successful, and if he doesn't take a cabinet position or doesn't get offered one, I do wonder how long you would sit around on the back benches. Once you've been Chancellor of the Exchequer and you've been a leadership candidate, do you want to go back onto the back benches and be oh, told that you are voting at 10 o'clock tonight and you will vote this way and do as you're told? I'm not sure that he will, and I wouldn't blame him in some respects. Well, if he was serving the country, if he was a public servant, maybe he would do Margaret Thatcher did there. Well, Theresa May oh, has Theresa uh, May still, doing it, still yeah. does. And, and, and I think it does depend on what your main focus of being in politics is. Is it to help your constituents, the people that voted you in? Is it to look after their problems? Or is it because your ambition tells you that you can be a cabinet minister and you can have all that power? I think those are very interesting questions for politicians and the answers will vary depending on who you speak to. Uh, I think the problem is that they're all out of touch with the the public, aren't they? I mean, he's such a wealthy man, he doesn't, he can't appreciate what the winter is going to be like for the rest of us. And I think they're all so far removed from, uh, you know, real life. Once they go into, into politics, uh, they seem to, you know, lose track of how the rest of us live. So I, I'm quite honestly, I mean, I'm, I look at this business that's going on now, this this race to be the, the next Prime Minister, and I think, who would have it? Who would have the job? There's so many problems. And quite honestly, the chances of this government being voted back in again, uh, I, I would have thought absolute zero. Well, indeed, I mean, indeed, we had a poll commissioned, uh, done on Friday, that said that uh, more and more people think Keir Starmer is going to be, and should be, the next Prime Minister. Well, the, the thing is... People who voted Tory all their life yeah, are just fed up. With the thing this. is, Anne, you know, they've had the worst time that anybody could have. They had the pandemic, they've had Putin's war, they've had the virtual collapse of the NHS, the in ineffective policing that's going on now. All these things have happened at the same time. And who do we all blame? The government. Because if we don't blame the government, who else, who else do, we do we blame? blame? You know, so they're getting the stick for everything, really. But quite honestly, in, in my long life, I've never seen this country in such a mess as, as it is now. Almost nothing works, does it? Unfortunately. Well, we were talking earlier about going back to the 70s when we had a three-day week and no yeah. electricity at all and, and rubbish piling high in the streets and we had to bring the army in. My, you wouldn't be able to do that now because there aren't enough of them. No, no. Yes. Yeah, enough troops. Bring the army, yeah, we had to bring the troops in to clear yeah. the rubbish. It, it was well, amazing. we got through it, though, didn't we? We did That's a point it. worth making is that, you know, tough though it was, we got through it and we will get through it again. But were we made of sterner stuff then? than we are now. Oh, well. Yeah. I do think that that is part of the argument, is that so we have everything sort of given to us and we've we've allowed ourselves to become a consumerist nation much more than we were then. And once that's taken away, we all feel really hard done by and, and, and feel that we're being left by mm. the wayside. But actually, maybe we do need a little bit more of the stiff upper lip. Yeah.
Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. Um, meanwhile, Mail on Sunday, David, impartiality in Ms Emily Maitlis. Yes, uh, cabinet ministers are planning to boycott Emily Maitlis's um, podcast uh, after she implied that the BBC is right wing. Uh, David Dimbleby has denied that there is a cabal of uh, Tory supporters at the top of the BBC. The thing is, I would have thought, actually, if anything, I would have thought the BBC was left wing. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's. But, but people have always have a view of the BBC, and it depends on their standpoint. They, always, they accuse the yeah. BBC of being too lefty, and then some say it's right. But if the right is more unusual. I think yeah. years ago, yes. when I was working a lot for the BBC, it was regarded as, as the, the best purveyor of news, particularly the World Service, mm. and as being completely impartial. I don't feel that it is now. Very often, you know, you have a Tory spokesman who is given about 15 seconds to say something, and then an opposition spokesman who's given half a minute or more to shoot it all down in flames. Might be because they're more interesting. <laughs> uh, I, I wouldn't be too sure of that. No, no, <laughs> no. no. I, have to, I have to say, I would have, I would have tagged the BBC as more left-leaning on mm. some of its shows. Mm. Yeah. No, not all. That's no, not all. Yeah. Um, uh, but, uh, now, the, we were talking about this a little bit earlier on. This is looking at the, the Mirrors version of this, Claire. What, what, it's, what it's costing us to do everyday things. Yes. And, the, and, the, and Sunday things, like the Sunday, Sunday roast. This is, this is it, the Sunday roast. A great institution that we all absolutely love. But as we were talking about with turning on your oven and the cost of cooking, this, you know, a, a Christmas dinner, for argument's sake, with Christmas not being that far away, uh, <laughs> could cost £10 just to cook. The price of vegetables has gone through the roof, the price of meat is now very high, the cost of electricity is going to be very high. I mean, it's, it's just gobsmacking that it can have gone up so much So if in if, such little time. If somebody at home right now is preparing the Sunday roast, you know, slathering the fat or the butter or whatever it is, the goose fat you put on a turkey. I'm a vegetarian, so I don't know. Uh, oh, and you've got so it in a big thing, you're going to put it in the oven. How much is it going to cost to cook a, a whacking great chicken or turkey or something? Well, I think, I mean, this is all sort of in the cost here. It says £10. And it, it's, it's quite hard to sort of to even it out. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's increased by at least £5 on last year. And I do think the cost of meat, I mean, like you, I don't eat meat either, but I, I buy it for the family. Mm -hmm. And I've watched the price of things like lamb and chicken go up enormously. What is upsetting is that the farmers don't get they're the majority not, no, of that cost. The cost of a lamb to a farmer, you know, they're making a loss on this. So it, it is sort of one of these very interesting things, things that we take for granted are now going to cost us a lot more money. Yeah. But I do wonder how much of it is scaremongering. And you start talking about the cost of Christmas dinner when it's August. Actually, is it going to be that bad? Because if you're feeding a family of four, five, six people for Christmas, then that cost is going to be spread out. So yeah. I think it's a little bit of a, an extreme example. Yes, you have to do the Jeremy Oliver thing as well, but bugging mm. everything in the oven. No, I mean, if you're Absolutely. putting in the turkey or whatever, you also do vegetables by doing them in the oven and using the oven if you're going to heat up the oven you may use every use it for everything it. And, yeah. and i think that's right and uh, you know but i i do want the, our farmers to get a much better deal and yeah. i think you know if we're going to have to pay the extra cost of this then yeah. we need to support our farming industry because it's going to be what's going to keep us going over the next few years are you going home to a sunday roast with mrs h i think we're having a chicken today as a matter of fact yes Yes, I think so. so. Are you still a traditional Sunday roast time? Yes, we very often have a roast lunch uh, on oh, Sunday. I love a roast. Uh, not always at this time of the year. Might uh, maybe have a salad or something. But yes, yes, very traditional, really. And we usually have fish and chips on Friday. Have I got time very quickly oh, to yes, mention you have. Nigel yes. Nelson? Because yeah. I oh, believe that he is uh, Nigel Nelson is, I believe, somebody who is known in this parish. But he's monopolising the Sunday Mirror today. He has not one, not two, but three articles. I mean, that's on page two. That is three bylines. He's got a lot to say. Maybe he's, he's not got a lot to, to say. say. <laughs> yeah, and lucky the wife's Maybe working as well, isn't it? <laughs> but listen, this is this his main story is 100 million top 10 fat cats, and there are big chiefs whose wages have soared by 39%. Britain's top 10 fat cats 
uh, rate in between them more than £100 million. Pounds. And here is the number one, uh, if I can pronounce his name right, Sebastian de Molsesius. Um, he is of the metals and mining giant Endeavour. And guess what his wages are? Oh, have a, have, a, have a quick enough. guess. Fifteen and a half million a year. So well, all the rest of us are wondering, you know, do we heat or eat and how are we going to get oh, through winter? And don't you think that's why there is more public sympathy at the moment for some of the strikers than there ever used to be? Yeah. Because what the, what the strikers are doing is pointing out the disparity between the people at the top who are yeah. getting a fortune and the people, you know, just and the workers. The gap, the gap, yeah. the gap has got has got far too big. And what about the water, the people yes. running the the water companies yeah. and the shareholders who are making all this money? And apparently, it hasn't been a reservoir built for is it 25 40 years, 40 years. years. 40 years now. Yeah. Where I am in Sussex, very often the floods, and I would love to know what happens to all that water. Why is it not preserved for the use of people? Yeah, because you know, we don't have the storage facilities as in as a reservoir. Yeah, there is the, the, there's, there's no reservoir. So we get all the worst of the floods, all that wasted water, and then these people are earning. Are this any kind of those of fat cats in charge of water companies? Uh, I don't know. I did look through them. Well, I didn't find a water company, but I reckon they won't be far off. No, they won't. They'll be definitely no. in that league. Mm -hmm. I mean, I yeah. don't, you know what, I don't disagree with people earning a lot of money if you're running a, a, a huge corporation. I don't have a problem with that. I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a, I don't do the politics of envy. What I do have an issue with is when they're getting things like 39% pay rises. You know, huge pay rises when other people aren't getting pay rises. Yeah. And also, if they're issue. not doing a particularly good job with yeah, their company. Yeah. And, and the I NHS. That's, that's what the about thing. the NHS, where you've got you know overloaded with with uh, executives and people earning a fortune, yeah. and then the, the the nurses, the nursing staff, mm. are not under under. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's all wrong, isn't it? It is, it and is. that's what makes people angry. I'm going to get a soapbox and take it off. Oh, do <laughs> Just very briefly, uh, uh, Claire, we've got 30 seconds. Lam uh, Lamborghini. This is a lamb that has been sold for more than the cost of a Lamborghini Huracan. This is a ram lamb in uh, Wales and it has sold for 168,000. Why? Why? It is a very good breed of lamb. It is a particularly fine example. But it, it's, you know, it's just gobsmacking that uh, this particular lamb can be sold to be bred and you just think, and, and then for the price of meat to be so low, I just don't understand the sort of disparity between that. But to put it next to, uh, you know, a Lamborghini Huracan, I think I'd rather have a lamb in all fairness, because it is beautiful. Yeah. Well, it's, it's obviously very efficient as a ram, isn't it? I, I, I would uh, say it's good at what it does. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. But it's Any of us who watch vision. Jeremy Clarkson's farm <laughs> program <laughs> understand that yes. there, are, there are rams that can deliver and there are rams that can't. Absolutely. Well, I'm very glad at that point we're getting David Hamilton out. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been good to see you both. Thank you very much. Stay with us. We've got some gladiators heading your way in the next hour. Uh, Wolf and Rhino are coming uh, to join us very soon. Are you ready for that?